Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with my HBCU Simmons College of Kentucky Falcon shirt on. Go Simmons Falcons with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me today as we continue our theme centered around the one question we all ask ourselves uh, when life just doesn't make sense. And that is why? Why does God, who is omnipotent, all powerful, God who is all loving, uh, omni love, allow things to happen? And we're looking at that this entire week. How do you make sense out of the nonsense of evil and suffering? Today, I want to respond to a question um, that people often say. They say, you know, life is not fair just not fair. You're a child, you were a child and your mother passes. Like my mother passed a week before my 11th birthday. I was blessed because uh, my father remarried and uh, I, I had another mother who came in and nurtured me and loved me in, in some incredible ways. But still, that is not that does not get to the question of why did my biological mother die, especially such at, a, at such an early age, at the age of 36? Why does evil take place in the world? The, is it fair? And you may want to, you may wrestle with the question, is it fair? Is life fair? Um, this issue of the fairness of life is what uh, theologians call the odyssey. The Odyssey, the study of the Odyssey. You look that word up in your leisure, T-H-E-O-D-I-C-Y, the Odyssey. And it's why God allows evil or why life is so unfair. And to the question, what does the Bible have to say? Looking at the Bible about fairness. Um, is life fair? Here's the answer to the question, is life fair? Kevin, tell me, is life fair based on what the Bible teaches? Answer is this. Yes, life is fair. No, life is not fair. No, life is really not fair. That's the answer. Yes, life is fair. No, life is not fair. No, life really isn't fair. Now let's see how we find these three responses to the question, is life fair in the Bible? First of all, is life fair? The answer is yes. There is an element of fairness in the, in the world. Galatians chapter six and seven says this, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant, or in other words, notice what it's saying, you will, you will reap what you sow. I'm using a modern translation, New Living Translation, but in the King James Version, it says, you will reap what you sow, and that's fair. So if I, if I reap, if I, if I sow some tomatoes, and I get some tomatoes back, that's fair. I shouldn't complain if I sow some tomatoes and, and, and I don't get green beans because that's not what I sowed. I'm gonna reap whatever I sow. And there is fairness in life. Um, if I drink and then later on I have liver problems, I shouldn't say, well, it's not fair that I have liver problems because I'm simply reaping what I sow. There's a sense of, of, of fairness. That, that's right, whatever I sow, I expect to reap. If I'm a negative person, and as a result of my negativity, I don't have many friends, or if I don't keep my word and I don't have friends who trust me, people don't trust me, then that's fair because I'm simply reaping what I sow. The positive side of it, if I'm a kind person, a, a, a gentle person, a loving person, a supportive person, and people love being around me, well, that's fair because I'm simply getting back that which I ditched out. So I'm reaping uh, what I sow. If I work hard and I get good grades, well, that's fair because I'm reaping what I sowed. I reap, 
I, I sold hard work and now I'm reaping the rewards of that hard work. But if I procrastinate and I don't work hard, I don't maximize my effort and I don't get good grades, then I don't go to the teacher and say, why didn't you, why didn't you give me a good grade? And the teacher will say, I, I didn't give you anything. You are simply reaping what you sold. And that is fair. So the question is life fair? Yes, life is fair. But secondly, the Bible teaches not only is life fair, but there is an element in which no life is not fair. We talked about this yesterday with Psalm 73. This man named Asaph, who is wrestling with the unfairness of life in Psalm 73, verse one, he says this, truly God is good to Israel, to those whose heart is pure, but as for me, I almost lost my footing, which means he lost his faith. My feet were slipping and I almost was gone. I envied the proud when I saw the prosperity. Uh, I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. So that's not fair because the, the wicked are prospering. They're not reaping what they sowed. If they were wicked, then they should, weep. They should, should reap it. And then he says uh, in verse 13, not only does he say something about the prosperity of the wicked, but he also says something about the adversity of the righteous. He said, did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. In other words, I try to live right. Every morning brings me pain. And he says in verse 14, all day long trouble. In the morning, I wake up in pain. That's not fair. It seems that since he's doing good, he shouldn't have trouble. He shouldn't have pain. And since the wicked people are doing wicked, <clears throat> they should not have prosperity. They shouldn't have prosperity. But life is not fair. <clears throat> in a sense, life is fair. But in a sense, we live in a world of unfairness. And that's because we live in a fallen world. And all of us, we, we, we focus a lot on the unfairness. And we should, because we should try to make things fair and just and equitable in our world. There is no unfairness like the unfairness that has been inflicted upon the black community for 400 years. Nothing. Nothing compares to it in the annals of human history from 1619 to this present point. Black people are the victims of extreme unfairness and injustice. And if you don't know that, it's because you are totally ignorant and oblivious to history. And you're ignorant to the way things are arranged today. It's unfair. It's unfair. Yes, life is fair. You reap what you sow. But no, life is not fair. It's not fair. And so I think that we should be prepared to experience fairness. This was fair. And we need to point out when it's fair. We don't need to blame uh, unfairness to things that we have brought in our own life. We should say, yeah, this is fair. I'm reaping what I'm sowing. Um, but we also need to acknowledge that life is also unfair and that we can be dealt a bad hand. And it, we had nothing to do with bringing that bad hand into our life. So, so don't tell people who are suffering, well, it's fair. No, it's not fair. Not all the time. Sometimes it is fair, but sometimes it is not fair. Is life fair? Yeah, yes, you reap what you sow. No, it's not fair. But then the Bible teaches this. Sometimes life is not fair. In fact, life is, is better than fair. What do you mean by that? Better than fair. There's a story in the Bible that's recorded in Matthew chapter 20. I want you to look at it with me. This is what I mean. It says, God's kingdom is like an estate manager who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay a wage of a dollar a day, which was the going uh, wage. You, you earned a dollar a day and went to work. <clears throat> Later, about nine o'clock, the manager saw some other men hanging around the town square unemployed. He told them, go to work in his vineyard. He would pay fair, them a fair wage. They went out. He did the same thing at noon, again at three o'clock. At five o'clock, he went back and found still others standing around. He said, why are you standing around all day long? They said, because no one has hired us. Who told them to go work in his vineyard? 
When the day's work was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed his foreman, call the workers in pay and pay them their wages, starting with the last hired and go to the first. Those hired at five o'clock came up where each was given a dollar. When those who were hired first saw, they assumed they would get far more, but they got the same, each of them one dollar. So it's late autumn and the springs are getting ready to come and this planter must get workers out there to go out and pick his grapes or he will, those grapes will be ruined by the deluge of rain. So he goes out to the place where you can find employees and he goes out and uh, it's six o'clock in the morning and he gets workers and says, go out there and I'll pay you uh, a day's wages, wages. And they go out, they're gonna get a dollar. He, and they agree. And then he, but he still needs more workers. And he goes to the, to the place where you find workers at nine o'clock. And he says, go out and I'll pay your day's work. I'll do you right. And he goes out at 12 noon, get some more workers. And then at three o'clock, get some more workers. And then at five o'clock, he goes out and gets some more workers and says to them, go out and I will pay you. And that means there's only one hour left in the day because in the Jewish day, it starts at 6 a.m. in the morning and ends at 6 p.m. And the worker who only put in one hour when it came time to pay the workers, he paid the five o'clock worker first. And those who had been there since six o'clock in the morning saw what he paid the man at five and who worked at five o'clock, came in at five o'clock. He paid them a day's wage as though the person who only had worked one hour had actually worked 12 hours. So the people who had been out for 12 hours said, you know what, if he gave him a day's wage for just one hour, then uh, he's giving them a dollar, then I can expect $12, 12 days of, if that's the way he's distributing money. But the man who worked at six in the morning got the same pay that the man who worked at five in the morning. The man at five only got, got a day's wage. And it's not because the, the foreman cheated the man who'd worked 12 hours because they had an agreement. That's what he was supposed to get. But the foreman decided to be extra good to the man who only worked one hour. So the man who worked one hour and looked and said, oh my God, I worked one hour and I got more than I deserve. He had to say, you know what? Life for me sometimes is fair. I reap what I sow. And life for me sometimes has been unfair uh, because uh, I have tried to do right and bad things have happened. But life for me has also been better than fair, which is to say when you want to look at the fairness of life, don't forget that God has been good to you that God has given you some things that you know, I know I don't deserve. God has done for my life far more than I know I deserve. So when I wanna park my anger on the fact that what did I do to deserve this? When some bad happens, you can say, oh, what did I do to deserve this? Well, why don't you turn that question around when you think about all the wonderful good things that you just inherited, you didn't do anything to get it. You came in and started working at five and God gave you stuff as though you've been working all along. What did you do to inherit that? All the wonderful people in your life, all the doors that have opened up in your life, all the blessings that have been showered in your life. Whenever you're tempted to fret or complain, you think of God's goodness to you. Because yes, life is fair. You reap what you sow. No, life is unfair. It's just the arrangement is the arrangement of life sometimes stinks. But then sometimes God is greater than fair. God didn't give me what I deserve. God gave us more than we deserve. We didn't start working until five and we only worked one hour. But when we opened our paycheck, we said, oh my God, God has blessed me as though I've been working all day. That's the kind of God we serve. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and help us uh, to remember that life is fair and to watch what we do because we will reap what we sow. And that sometimes life is unfair, but when life is unfair, thank you that you promise to be with us.
And then sometimes for us, life has been greater than fair, that you've done for us what we know we have not deserved. You've given us grace. You've been good to us. Don't let us forget this. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, uh, consider becoming a part of St. Stephen Church. Everybody needs to be a part of a church. So email us. We will get back with you. Email us at SSC Live New Start. SSC Live New Start. Well, peace and blessings. I hope you have a wonderful day. And until we meet again tomorrow, don't forget what we're saying. We had to we had to upgrade what we've been saying for over a year because new CDC guidelines are coming out. So this is what we can say today. And that is during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, to stay sane. We used to say stay home, but now instead of saying stay home, stay safe, stay sane, stay masked. One day we'll be able to say stay safe, stay sane, be unmasked. But right now, Keep that mask on. See you tomorrow.